Okay. Hello class. Today we are going to learn about the male reproductive system. So we're in our comprehensive sexual health unit. And so we're going to learn about structures and functions of the male reproductive system. So here's an image of the reproductive system. So see if you can see how many of the structures in this image that you can name. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next slide now. So, these are the structures that we're going to go over today. So here's an image that's in color. Um, and you don't have to write all these down yet. We're going to go over each of these. Okay, so we're going to start with the penis. So, here's an image. Um, and the penis is an external organ. Um, and it actually has two functions. So one, it delivers semen to the female reproductive tract. And the second function is it transports urine out of the body as well. So it transports semen and urine. So two functions. And it is made up of erectile tissue. So you can see here on the outside in this image. Here's the erectile tissue here on the outside. This becomes engorged with blood during an erection. So this tissue here. Okay, um, next we're going to talk about the testes, or testicle, singular. So testes is plural for two. And here's an image here. So these are the testes. And this is what it looks like. Okay, so males have two, two testes. Um, and they are held in the scrotum. So scrotum we're going to talk about in a few slides over, but that's what holds them. And their function is to produce sperm and male hormones, which testosterone is the primary male hormone. So the function of the testes is to produce sperm and male hormones. They work best at temperatures slightly less than the core body temperature. Okay, and so this is why we think they're held outside of the body. So they're not inside the body. Spermatogenesis is less efficient at temperatures that are lower or higher than the body temperature. So we're going to talk about spermatogenesis in a little bit too. So this process, it works less efficiently if it's at temperatures that are higher or lower than body temperature. Okay, um, so this is why they're located outside of the body. Okay, so next we're going to talk about the epididymis, and it's here in this image here. So this is the testes, and this is the epididymis. Okay, so it's a mass of tightly coiled tubes. So you can tell here, you can kind of see, they're like little tubes that are coiled around, um, and it's cupped against the testicle here. So right here on the outside of it. So it's cupped against the testicle here on the outside of it, just on one side of it. So it doesn't go around the whole entire thing. Okay, so the function of the epididymis is it acts as a maturation for sperm. So it allows the sperm to grow and mature. And it's also a storage place for sperm. So it allows the sperm to mature as it's being stored. Okay, um, so now we're going to talk about um, spermatogenesis. So I mentioned it a little earlier. So we're going to go back to meiosis. So we learned about meiosis, and meiosis creates male and female gametes. So the male gametes are sperm, and they're here at the end. Um, and then this process in the male, meiosis in the male, is called spermatogenesis because it makes sperm here at the end. So you remember talking about meiosis where it divides, and then it, the result is for sperm in the male. And then oogenesis is the female, so we'll learn about that a little later in another video. 
Um, so in the female, it creates three eggs. So here's a closer image. So in the male, it's spermatogenesis. In the female, it's called oogenesis. OK, so spermatogenesis. Here's the closer image. So this occurs in the epididymis um, and the testes, so here, as we talked about. So these are the cells dividing here, and it creates the sperm. OK, um, and then now we're going to talk about the vas deferens. So here, the vas deferens is the tube that transports the sperm from the epididymis to the urethra, or to the outside of the body. So this is the epididymis here, and this tube here is called the vas deferens. Okay, and it's also called the ductus deferens. Um, and this is what is actually cut during a vasectomy. So if you've heard about a vasectomy, or it's basically a sterilization um, of males, so that they can no longer have children. So here's an image of a vasectomy, what happened. So this is the vas deferens here. Um, and basically, they tie it off, cut it off, and then they place it. They can suture it here. And this can actually be reversed. So they can reattach it if they want to. So that's a vasectomy. Vasectomy prevents sperm from becoming part of the ejaculate. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the scrotum. So there's a scrotum here. And this is also it's an external pouch-like structure. And this function, so it holds and protects the testes. So the testes and the epididymis that we just talked about are inside this scrotum here. Um, and this allows the testes to have a slightly lower temperature than that of the body. Okay, so why is this necessary? I mentioned this earlier. So why is it better to have a lower temperature than the body? Right, spermatogenesis. So we talked about how it, the process functions better if it's at lower temperatures. So they're stored outside. Now we're going to talk about seminal vesicle. So this is the seminal vesicle here. And it's a sac-like structure. It's attached to the vas deferens that we just talked about. And it's on one side of the bladder. So this here is the bladder. And that's the seminal vesicle. Um, and its function. So this produces a sticky yellowish fluid. And this provides sperm cells with energy and aids their motility or their movement. And the majority of the fluid of the ejaculate is seminal fluid. Okay, and this seminal fluid is alkaline. And why do you think that would be important? Why does it need to be alkaline? Okay, um, this is because it neutralizes the acidic environment of the female vagina. So next, we're going to talk about the urethra. So this is an image of the urethra here. So it's the tube that runs down the length of the penis. So you can see here, so the urethra. Okay, and it has two functions. Um, it transports things, but it transfers two different things. It transfers both sperm and urine. Okay, and the human male, the urethra, is about 8 inches long. This is twice as long as it is in females. So females also have a urethra to transport urine from their bladder. Okay, now we're going to talk about the prostate gland. So here, I'm using the same image so we can get an idea of what all these structures are. So this is the prostate gland. And this is the urethra that we just talked about. So it goes along this way to the bladder. And this is the prostate gland around here. So it surrounds the urethra at the base of the bladder. And it also produces an alkaline milky fluid. And this fluid is part of the man's ejaculate or semen as well. Okay, um, And it's about the size of a kiwi. Um, and it can be felt or checked during a rectal exam. So doctors can check. Okay, um, and then this prostate gland is also prone to cancer in middle-aged men. So here's an image of a normal prostate here. And then there's prostate cancer where it's kind of enlarged and the cells are growing. So that's a cancerous prostate gland. Okay, and then last we're going to talk about the 
bulbule. Last, we're going to talk about the bulbule urethral gland. So this is the gland here. A little arrow here. So this is the gland. It's the smaller one. So if you remember, the prostate gland is this larger one here on the urethra. And it's the smaller one here. It's like a little bulb. So that's why it's called bulbul urethral. OK, so it's pea-sized. And it's located on the side of the urethra, as I just mentioned, below the prostate. Um, and it's also called the Cowper's gland. That's another name for it. Um, and its function. So this produces a clear, vicious secretion known as the pre-ejaculate. So all these glands here produce a fluid. And this one produces the pre-ejaculate. Um, and this fluid helps to lubricate the urethra for sperm to pass through. So neutralizing the traces of acidic urine in the urethra. So this releases fluid first, and it kind of clears the urethra before these ones do. Okay, and this fluid also helps flush any residual urine or foreign matter in the urethra. Okay, so now, how many parts can you identify now? So here's the same image we looked at earlier. So see if you can identify more of them from what we talked about. So let's see. So these two here, um, they aren't part of the reproductive system. A little atom in there. So this is the bladder. So both males and females have this. Um, but since it's in the same area, we'll label it. Um, and then this is the anus here. So again, those aren't part of the, reductive, the reproductive system. Um, but we're just going to label them here. So first, we're going to start with this. So this is the seminal vesicle. And this is the bulbal urethral gland. This is the vas deferens here. And this is the epididymis, this one here, that surrounds this, which is the testes. And so this here is the scrotum. So it holds the testes and the epididymis. There's testes. This here is the urethra, this tube that runs along here. And this is the penis and the prostate gland. Okay. So those are the structures of the male reproductive system. And now real quick, we'll go over the functions of those. So this is the seminal vesicle. So it produces a sticky yellowish fluid, provides sperm energy, and aids in their motility. This is the bulbal urethral gland. And it produces a clear slippery fluid that lubricates and neutralizes the urethra. And this is the vas deferens. It transports sperm from the epididymis, which is here, um, to the urethra. So it travels along this way to the urethra. Okay, um, And then the epididymis, it's a maturation and storage site for sperm. And this is the scrotum that holds and protects the testes. And this is the testy, which is what produces sperm and the male hormones. So the testy is what produces sperm. That's important to remember. Which organ produces sperm? The testes. Um, and then this is the urethra, which conveys <coughs> or transports both sperm and urine down the length of the penis. So both urine and sperm. And this is the penis, which delivers semen to the female reproductive tract. And finally, we have the prostate gland again. And this produces a milky fluid, which makes up most of the volume of the ejaculate. OK, and those are the functions of the male reproductive system structures. And here's a list of my sources.